Hello everyone and welcome to another Commander Tactics Deck Tech. In the land of gods and goddesses, one legendary has flown under the radar, and that is the mono blue threat, Thrix the Sudden Storm. Thrix is a 4-5 elemental giant, costing 3 generic and double blue. Thrix has flash, because storms can come out of nowhere, and also has flying. And while we have Thrix on board, spells that we cast with CMC 5 or higher cost 1 less to cast, and they can't be countered. With this deck that we're brewing, we're going to be leaning heavy into that CMC reduction for our 5 cost spells. The best part about Thrix is that he helps all spell types, so that means our artifacts, our enchantments, everything. For our deck, we're going to be focusing on blue spell slinging. The first thing we will want to ensure we do is to ramp as fast as possible to get us to that 5 mana threshold and also have spells that are going to protect us until we get there. Then we're just going to start unloading all of our biggest threats, throwing big punches one after another. And being in blue, we're always going to have the answers for any situation that we have to deal with by drawing tons of cards and digging deep into our deck. And this blue bombshell of a deck comes at the very affordable price of only about 150 bucks. But let's dive right in at taking a look at how we're going to get to that 5 mana so quickly and stay safe along the way. Starting off with 3 additional mana reducers in Arcane Melee, Baral Chief of Compliance, and Primal Amulet. Arcane Melee is a 5 cost enchantment that if we have Thrix on board will reduce it to only 4 mana, but it says instants and sorceries cost 2 less to cast. Now while this does sound amazing, a 2 mana reduction for only 4 mana, unfortunately this is going to be global, so even our opponent's instants and sorceries are going to cost 2 less. So do make sure that you are able to capitalize whenever you cast this. Then we have Baral, Chief of Compliance, one of our creatures we're going to try to get down early, going to make all of our instants and sorcery spells cost one less, and whenever we successfully counter a spell, we get to loot, draw a card, and discard a card. And Primal Amulet, one of the best spell slinging artifacts there are. Instants and sorcery spells we cast are going to cost one less, and whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, we're going to put a charge counter onto Primal Amulet. Then if there are four more counters on it, we can remove them and transform it into Primal Wellspring. Primal Wellspring is a land that taps for any mana color we need, which of course is blue. When that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery spell, we get to copy it for free and can choose new targets if we'd like. While the mana reduction of Primal Amulet is great, the copying ability of Primal Wellspring is just absolutely bonkers. Then we have two very specific mana rocks that we're going to be running with Nyx Lotus and Gilded Lotus. Nyx Lotus coming straight to us from Theros Beyond Death. This legendary artifact enters the battlefield tapped, unfortunately, but does tap for any one color equal to the amount of our devotion to that color. Being in mono blue, we are going to have a ton of enchantments and possibly creatures on board when Nyx Lotus hits the field, and we are going to be able to capitalize the next turn when we tap Nyx Lotus for a boatload of blue mana. And Gilded Lotus for 5 mana, so going to be reduced if we have Thrix on board, just taps for 3 mana of any one color. A 3 colored mana rock for only 4 mana is absolutely amazing. But as we're ramping and trying to get our mana reducers in place, we're going to need to make sure that we stay protected. And that's why we're running spells like Aether Spouts, Aether Eyes, and Aether Gale. These Aether spells are going to help us keep our side of the board out of harm's way. Aether Spouts, instant, costing 5 mana, so will be reduced if Thrix is on board. For each attacking creature, its owner puts it on top or bottom of his or her library. So if we have an opponent that is swinging out big at us, we can make them bounce all their stuff. Or even if they're splitting it, we can still punish them just for attacking. Aetherize, 3 and a blue, going to return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. And Aether Gale is going to let us return 6 target non-land permanents to their owner's hand. Again, if we have Thrix on board, Aether Gale is going to cost less, and we just get to bounce the 6 biggest threats on the board back to our opponent's hand. 
Moving on, we have two more bouncers with Flood of Tears and Rivers Rebuke. Flood of Tears is a new one coming out of core 20 for 6 mana, reduced with Thrix. We get to return all non-land permanents to their owner's hand. Now this does include ours, but if we do return 4 or more non-token permanents that we control, we get to put a permanent card from our hand back onto the battlefield. The best part about this is that if we do have Thrix on board and we reduce Flood of Tears, we can keep him in hand and then flash him back onto the board if we have the mana to do so. And then Rivers Rebuke for 4 and Blue Blue again reduced by Thrix, going to return all non-land permanents target player controls to their owner's hand. So a one player Cyclonic Rift, super powerful, and with all the abilities that we have that are coming up, we could even copy this and do it to multiple opponents. And then lastly, in case we want to try to get some creatures on board to act as chump blockers and dissuade our opponents from attacking us, we've got Metallurgic Summonings and Tauran Sky Summoner. Metallurgic Summonings for three blue blue, again that five mana sweet spot. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you're going to get to create an XX colorless construct artifact token where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So if we cast a humongous 10 mana spell, we're going to get a 10-10 colorless construct artifact token straight onto the battlefield. And then for 5 mana, 3 blue blue, we can exile this enchantment to return all instants and sorcery cards from our graveyard to our hand, but we can only activate this if we have 6 artifacts on board. And then Taurand Sky Summoner for 2 blue blue, whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, we're going to get a 2-2 blue Drake creature token, and it has flying, so this is going to help us defend against any of those pesky flyers our opponents might have. But after we got all the mana that we need, what are we going to cast it on? Well, of course, we're going to be casting the biggest haymakers that we can possibly think of, starting with Aminatu's Augury and Blatant Thievery. These two spells are absolute bombs. Aminatu's Augury for 8 mana, exile the top 8 cards of our library. We get to put a land card from among them onto the battlefield, not tapped by the way, and until the end of turn, for each non-land card type, you may cast a card of that type from those exiled, and you can cast it without paying its mana cost. With our mana curve being so high, and with our healthy mix of creatures, enchantments, artifacts, everything, we are going to be casting a ton of free spells thanks to Aminatu's Augury. And then we have Blatant Thievery for 7 mana, you know what the spell does, for each opponent gain control of target permanent that that player controls. This card isn't going to make you friends, it's going to upset your opponents and it will probably make you a big threat, but hey, it doesn't matter because we have three new permanents on our side of the field. And then we have a few ridiculously powerful enchantments with Omniscience, Thought Reflection, and Mind's Dilation. These are just some of my favorite blue spells in the game of Magic, but they are very expensive to cast. Omniscience. 7 blue 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 so we're looking at 10 mana to cast this but you may cast spells from your hand for free as long as this champion is in play. Just a ridiculous card and if we're able to get it on the board or cheat it in somehow there's no reason we shouldn't just win. Thought Reflection, 7 mana, 4 triple blue. If you would draw a card instead you get to draw 2 cards and Mind's Dilation. This card is a doozy, 7 mana. Whenever an opponent casts his or her first spell each turn, that player then exiles the top card of their library. If it's a non-land card, we just get to cast it for free. There is a good, good chance that with Mind's Dilation on field, we're going to be casting 2 to 3 spells before this can get removed from the board, which is going to equate to a lot of mana that we got for free. Then next up we have two monster creatures with monster effects in Tidespout Tyrant and Scourge of Fleets. Tidespout Tyrant, 8 mana, has flying, but says whenever we cast a spell, so all we have to do is cast it, it doesn't have to resolve, we are going to return a target permanent to its owner's hand. This can be lands, yes we can start bouncing all of our opponent's lands to their hand, and if we storm off or cast enough spells, our opponent's going to be landless and we're just going to win the game. And then Scourge of Fleets for 7, we get this Kraken 6-6 six, six body that says whenever it enters the battlefield, we're going to return each creature our opponents control, not ours, 
with toughness X or less to their hand where X is the number of islands we control. And as you can imagine, this deck is running almost entirely islands. So whenever Scourge hits the field, we're going to be bouncing everything back to our opponent's hands. And lastly, in the arsenal, we have Planar Bridge, Spell Twine, and Swarm Intelligence. Planar Bridge, this artifact costing 6 mana, says for 8 mana we can tap it to search our library for any permanent and put it straight onto the battlefield. While 8 mana is a hefty price to pay, going to get that Tide Spout Tyrant or going to get that Omniscience right at the instep before our turn can be a game winning play. And then Spell Twine is Sorcery, 6 mana. We get to exile an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard and an instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard. We get to copy them and we get to cast both copies without paying their mana cost. Spell Twine essentially letting us flashback one of our best instant or sorcery spells with an upside of casting one of our opponents as well and Swarm Intelligence 7 mana, this enchantment, all it simply does, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery card, you may copy it, and you can choose new targets if you want. While 7 mana to do nothing isn't really that exciting, with Thrix on board we can reduce this down to only 6 mana, and then hopefully capitalize on it immediately the turn it comes down. But along with all these amazing haymakers, we do need to make sure that we have the right answers for any threats our opponents might have or threats coming to our side of the board trying to take out our creatures. And that's why we're running things like Pull From Tomorrow, Finale of Revelation, and Gadwick the Wizened. All of these spells do have X in their mana cost, and if their total CMC with the X included is over 5, Thrix can reduce it by 1. But Pull From Tomorrow says draw X cards, then discard a card. Finale of Revelation, gonna draw X cards with an upside of if X is 10 or more, which very reasonably could be. Then instead, we're gonna shuffle our graveyard into our library, draw the 10 plus cards, untap 5 lands, and we have no maximum hand size the rest of the game. And Gadwick the Wizened X Triple Blue, this legendary blue creature making a little bit of noise in standard, says whenever Gadwick the Wizened enters the battlefield, we're going to draw X cards, and whenever we cast a blue spell, which is almost all of our spells, we get to tap a target non-land permanent and opponent controls. This is going to help us get in if we're swinging or tap down any artifacts our opponents might be holding up for answers or mana. But just in case we've milled or already played the spell that we need, we also are going to run Archaeomancer, the Mirari Conjecture, and Spell Weaver Volute to ensure we can get them back from the graveyard to our hands to cast again. Archaeomancer, whenever it enters the battlefield, we get to return an instant or sorcery card from the graveyard to our hand. The Mirari Conjecture, similar thing for 5 mana, so again that sweet spot. On the turn it comes down, we get to return an instant card from our graveyard to our hand. On the second turn, we get to return a sorcery. And then on the third turn, whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, we get to cast a copy of it. The Mirari Conjecture can absolutely help bail us out if we need it to. And lastly, one of the weirdest enchantments I've ever seen in my life, Spell Weaver Volute. This enchantment aura for again, the 5 mana, says enchant an instant card in a graveyard. Whenever you play a sorcery spell, you get to copy the enchanted instant card. You may play the copy without paying its mana cost, and if you do, you remove that card from the game and attach Spell Weaver Volute to another instant card in a graveyard. Not even sure really to start with this card, but basically we're going to enchant an instant card in a graveyard. It can be our graveyard, it can be our opponent's graveyard. Then when we cast a sorcery, we can copy that instant and cast at the same time. And then we get to enchant another instant to copy when we cast our next sorcery. It's it's very convoluted, but man, what a crazy spell enabling us to just cast tons of instances and mess with our opponent's graveyard at the same time. And speaking of messing with our opponent's stuff, of course, we have to run a few counter spells to deal with anything our opponents have coming our way. And that's why we're running on top of the traditional ones, we're running Spell Swindle and Desertion. These both 5 CMC gonna do big things on top of just countering Spell Swindle. For 5 mana, we get to counter target spell and create X colorless treasure artifact tokens, where X is that spell's CMC. 
So not only are we denying our opponent a spell, we are also ramping up a ton of mana in the process. And Desertion, again, five mana, three and double blue, counter target spell. If it's an artifact or a creature spell, we get to put it straight onto the battlefield under our control instead. This card is so sick because you better believe if our opponent casts their commander and we counter it, it is coming straight to our side of the field. And just to be 100% clear, I already looked up this ruling to make sure it works and Desertion will replace the ability for the commander to go to the command zone so you will get to take it. And to ensure we truly have every answer possible, we need to make sure we have multiple answers to how we are going to end these games. That's why we're running multiple alternate win conditions like Thassa's Oracle, Laboratory Maniac, and a Temis All-Seeing. Each of these spells bringing with them a different win condition to help us get this game over with. Thassa's Oracle for double blue, brand new from Theros Beyond Death, making waves in the competitive EDH format, says whenever it enters the battlefield, we're going to look at the top X cards of our library where X is our devotion to blue, which is probably going to be pretty high. We're going to put one of them on top of our library and the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. And if X is greater than the total number of cards that we have left in our deck, well, we just win the game. This card is absolutely busted, and if our devotion is high enough, we will just win even if we have several cards still in our deck. But if we have almost none, we can run Lab Maniac onto the board, draw out the rest of our deck, and win that way. And if those two don't get the job done, well, we can go for the extra spicy Atemis All Seeing win, and that says. Whenever a Temis all seeing deals damage to an opponent, we can reveal our hand. And if the cards in our hand have at least six different CMCs, that player loses the game. I have yet to see a Temis actually be used efficiently and would love to make it happen. And that's why we put it in this deck with our a boatload of card draw to get those six different cards and be able to kill opponents. Definitely a jank card and you could cut it if you don't like fun. But along with all the threats and answers, we have a ton more spells. So let's take a look at them now. What else we got going inside the 99? Our removal and control in this deck boils down to 15 cards, many of them counter spells and bounce effects, but a few removal as well. Card draw and advantage, we're looking at about 16 spells, which is the highest we've ever had in a deck, thanks to all the blue draw that we're going to have. Our ramp truly surprised me at the end. We have 10 to 14 spells. The reason I put 10 to 14 is because we have many mana reducers, which I do consider ramp. And lastly, the power level of this deck. Well, you're looking at about a five. This deck is put together well with a core synergy, but with such a high CMC, the variance in this deck could be troublesome. Winning with this deck, it can be broken down into about three main strategies. First strategy is just we are going to outvalue our opponents, casting our humongous bonker spells like Omniscience. If that doesn't work, we can use our tokens and our pinging with Metallurgic Summon to chip away at our opponents and get in for the little damage and if neither of those get the job done we do have multiple alternate win conditions that can help us bring wins home few budget alternatives for this deck future sight murmuring mystic and uyo silent prophet future sight going to be the sweet spot 5 cmc but it's going to let us play with the top card of our library revealed and then we can actually cast the top card of our library if we want to Murmuring Mystic going to help us create more tokens. And Uyo, this 4-4 flyer lets us return two lands we control to our hand to copy an instant or sorcery spell. While bouncing lands isn't too ideal, copying the right instant or sorcery could just win us the game. And then a few powerful upgrades you could slot into this deck. Nykthos, Shrine of Nyx, the land. Tezra the Seeker, Planeswalker, and Empress Galena. Nykthos Shrine of Nyx is a land that can tap for a ton of blue mana if we have the devotion for it. Tezzeret going to help us get the artifacts we need onto the field to ramp us even quicker or help us generate tons of mana by untapping our artifacts. And Empress Galena, just a bomb legend. We can pay two mana, tap it, and take control of a legendary permanent. And you know there's always going to be a target thanks to all of the commanders going to be around the table. 
But that does bring us to the close of this Sudden Storm deck. Thrix, a blue bombshell. I love this guy. I think his effect is unique and fun. I love commanders that have flash. Let us know down in the comments, what did we do wrong? Is 5 CMC just too high of a curve? If you're new to the channel, thanks so much for checking us out. Maybe consider hitting that subscribe button to know when our next video goes live. New Commander Deck Techs every Friday. If you're a Twitter user, head on over there, drop us a follow at EDH Tactics. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you for the next one.